the people that are unreasonable are often kind of inventing the new standard way to do things. So, you know, it might seem crazy, but give it a year or two, give it a couple of years and, and see like, oh, are people still doing that? And maybe it wasn't so unreasonable. You're listening to the Building a Coaching Culture podcast. If you need to compete and win in the 21st century labor market as an employer of choice, this podcast is for you. Each week, we share leadership development, coaching, and culture development insights from leading experts who are developing world-class cultures in their own organizations. And now, here's your host, J.R. Flatter. Hey, welcome back, everybody. I'm J.R. Flatter, as always here with Lucas and Rosalie. Hello. Hi, everyone. We're nearing the end of our journey, our final enabling characteristic and final for a good reason. We'll talk about that and certainly by far the most provocative, but provocative on purpose because we want you to think about this. Think about your leadership. Think about your coaching in a different way. So here we are in our journey. We talked about charisma last time. And as you do in every session, giving your homework assignment, journaling, talking about charisma, what does it mean to you? Does it fit into your leadership house? Conversations with significant others. Found a leader that you considered especially charismatic and had a conversation with them. Finally, before we head back here, talk to your coach. And if it made sense, you put made charisma part of that conversation. Here we are in the 10th characteristic, unreasonable. How could it possibly be in a list of characteristics for courageous leadership? pretty confident that we'll explain why. You might not agree with it. It might not fit into your house. But here's where it comes from. Uh, George Bernard Shaw play, where the idea comes from. He said there are two kinds of people in this world. There are reasonable people who adapt themselves to the world. Then there are unreasonable people who attempt to adapt the world to themselves. All progress, therefore, depends on those unreasonable people. Here on this journey of courageous leadership, courageous coaching, are you willing and able to change the world? Are you willing and able to coach people to change their world? That's where our idea of unreasonableness as a characteristic of leadership originates. What are your thoughts as we head into this session? Some of these are harder to understand just off the bat. And I think like part of the boldness that we talked about is kind of like other people might expect you to be self-conscious about something and not willing to put yourself out there and the unreasonableness and the boldness kind of go hand in hand for me there. This one always surprises people, I think, when they see it. I know some people in my life who don't agree with this as much. If you think about it in the lens of being relentless in the pursuit of your dreams, then maybe that'll make more sense of just being determined, and like Lucas said, bold and unreasonable, I feel like go together. Um, and there's a lot of case studies and powerful leaders in our world that have been unreasonable and have had profound success because of it. So this one does ruffle some feathers for sure, though. <laughs> yeah, there's a reason we do it last, because you have the rest of your house of leadership to look back on and to say to any of these or all of them in combination require me to be reasonable or maybe perhaps a bit unreasonable. We'll show some historical examples where we think this comes in. Courageous leaders, courageous coaches are transformational. If you're in a technical role, you're probably in a pretty transactional role. Pay me $15 an hour and I will make you hamburgers. But as a transformational, courageous leader, courageous coach, you're purposefully, unreasonably perhaps, expecting to change yourself change those who work alongside of you, to change the world. Going back to the idea of being in the arena, a lot of people would consider you to be unreasonable that you're in that arena. It's nice and shady in the seats, got soft cushions. What are you doing? Can't you be a little more reasonable in your life? If you want to be transformational, we say you also need to be a bit unreasonable. Expect and demand that the world bend to your will. I think we've matured this a little bit beyond uh, what's written here. Maybe your vision, the demand might be a little strong, but again, purposefully being provocative here. 
if you've built your house of leadership and it's standing on a foundation of courage and you have a clear vision that you believe in, you have principles that inform that vision, that drive that vision forward, you know where you belong on the TCE continuum, you have a balanced work family self, why wouldn't you expect the world to come along with you? If you can't muster the courage to convince the world to come to your vision, perhaps it isn't standing on as strong a foundation as you thought it was. This goes back to courage for me, principles, vision, certainly. Are you willing and able to create the work-family self-balance? Perhaps be a bit unreasonable. There have been periods in my life where I've worked 20-hour days, seven days a week. Is that sustainable? That's a power 10 in life. No, it's not. And people would look at you and say, can't you be a bit more reasonable? I have friends and this acquaintances in my life, they say, you, you've achieved all the success, but you don't have time to enjoy it. You don't make time to enjoy it. They don't know what's going on behind the curtain. Right? I love what I do. I love being part of this team and being part of this family. There's a lot of time, a lot of joy going on. But they would say, can't you be a little more reasonable in your life? What do you two think when you see this statement? It's a statement you'd be willing to make in your life and in your leadership and in your coaching. How might you modify it? I guess you wouldn't be making decisions for a group or, you know, leading in general if you didn't think that you could have some concrete influence on what's going to happen in the end. So to me, it's kind of like expecting that, you know, your decisions are going to have an impact. It, it kind of makes you have that sense of responsibility. I guess for this one, it's thinking about being decisive in like I said, in pursuit of your vision. I think that with this, sometimes people might not agree with you or they might just have different perspectives on on life, but the right people will follow you in pursuit of that. For this one, like for unreasonable, I'm a kind of a geek in um, Hollywood and liking to be in on directors and understanding that. But there was this one director, Damien Chazelle, who worked for seven years to get this movie, La La Land, into production because no one believed in him. No one thought that a musical in the movies would be successful. And for seven years he worked and then eventually someone said yes. And now there's a ton of movie musicals out there. So maybe not exactly like bend the world to their will, but maybe do what you need to do and see what happens and see how you can change the world. So we've got a few examples that I think begin to show what are we talking about here in a thousand years ago, we domesticated cattle, began keeping them on purpose and doing things with them and for them. You got to imagine the first person who said, you know what, I'm going to run down that 1,200 pound beast and tackle it and steal its child's milk. They're so hungry, they're so desperate that they're willing to do that. I would bet a lot of the tribe said, what are you thinking? Can't you be just a little more reasonable? Again, Dr. King, 1964, there was a lot of the world asking him, can't you be just a little more reasonable? And he didn't say it using those words, but he did say, no, I won't. You're asking for patience. You know, I've been waiting several hundred years already. Sorry that you consider it to be unreasonable. Jeff Bezos is a picture in his first office. Uh, his desk is actually a door, if you look close enough, that he's handmade. I would almost certainly bet more than one person as he quit his Wall Street job said, you're going to do what? You're going to sell books over a computer? Haven't you heard of Borders? Haven't you heard of Barnes & Noble? Can't you be just a little more reasonable? This one's yours, Malala, right? Rosalie, I think yeah. you brought her to us. I mean, she was persecuted and shot giving a speech on women's education and women's rights and turned the tide in the name of gender for the Middle East. And so I think that she's a really good example of someone who was unwilling to go with the status quo and challenge it for the better and for the good. Courageous, unreasonable leaders are in the arena. We've talked about that already. I just thought of another example, Lucas, one of our favorite restaurants that we go to. The chef, when he started the restaurant, gave his mother a sample of the granola that he made in this restaurant. And she said to him, you know, if this restaurant doesn't work out, at least you can sell your granola. <laughs> Can't you be a little more reasonable, right? Not throw your life away on this dream. But here he is 
almost 50 years later, one of the most successful restaurants in the world, not only the country. So just like charisma, I would strongly encourage you to embrace unreasonableness, to cherish it actually, because in many ways it's a gift that you can muster the willingness and the ability to be seen as unreasonable in others' eyes while achieving your vision as part of achieving your vision. Same developmental conversations as uh, all the other characteristics. Journaling, have a conversation with your significant other. Maybe this will explain to them some of your eccentricities. Talk about what is the appropriate level of unreasonableness. Your family might become seen as that unreasonable family, but it might be that you're on the right path to the right vision. And you have to learn to work with that and live with that. And then a conversation with your coach as you come back for our final session, which is lifelong learning and where do we go from here? Thoughts as we head out the door, team? Just to reiterate, like the people that are unreasonable are often kind of inventing the new standard way to do things. So, you know, it might seem crazy, but, you know, give it a year or two, give it a couple of years and, and see like, oh, are people still doing that? And maybe it wasn't so unreasonable. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. We'll see you in the next session. Well, that concludes this episode of Building a Coaching Culture. I truly hope that this episode was helpful to you. If it was, be sure to follow us wherever you listen to podcasts. Maybe stop and give us a rating or a review and share this podcast with someone who might find it helpful as well. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.